Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to this game's tutorial. Today, we actually implement all the other loots. So right now you don't see them, but there's multiple loots in this list. We only see the three first one because that's the one that are active right now. But as you can tell, we have more a little bit below. And we also implement the sell button. So here I have, I have 80 gold. If I sell this, I have now 330. And which can, we can just uh, keep selling stuff and then finally spend that gold on levels. So that is what we're going to be doing today, so without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so here we are with our game. Last time, we figured this rock, we were able to set it, but we're never actually updating the text, we're never actually um, selling the thing for real. So that's what we're going to be tackling today. Let me go ahead and just open up the game scene. And uh, we're going to start by just duplicating our currency panel so let me just close this go under the currency panel open it up and those of course are the uh, loots they're not really currencies anymore but we haven't changed the name and we don't really need to so we've got a total of 13 currencies let me just duplicate that 12 more time two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, actually 12 more times and uh, here they are now we don't need to do any modification to those except the uh, loot here under the lo their loot container components. So first one being rock, the second one is log, third is silk, fourth is plank, brick, iron, gold, sapphire, emerald, ruby, and then the best one, the cat, the fox, and the unicorns. Alright, good times. Okay, so we've got all of these currency now. If we just um, make sure our array is not our range, we are going to play this. Go under currency, and here they all are. And if we try to sell this iron ingot, it's not going to work. Okay, so let's actually go and implement that. We are going to double click on our debug.log. And we now get to see our selling function. There is going to be a little bit of changes in here. We're gonna well first let's get rid of that and we are going to create um, two new int. The first one being the amount. So int amount is equal to the tower dot instance. Then we go at the loot. We find the index of that loot by using its enum. And then we also need the price which we get under the uh, loot manager, if I recall properly. So Loot loot price per unit. We send in the loot again. Okay. Now that being done, we can go ahead and just say, uh, well, since we're selling that object, we are going to go to that very index in the loot array. So the tower instance loot at index loot is equal to zero. So we're selling everything. We're just putting that back on zero. Now the tower dot instance dot currencies, uh, and then we find the gold. So int currency dot gold is now plus equal to the amount times the price, and this way we actually gain the amount of gold we need to gain. Now there is two things we need to update. First, we need to update the text of this very loot container. So we're going to say update text. And we also need to update the goal. So we're going to say game UI dot instance dot update currencies text. And this way it is actually going to sell something for real and we get the money back. So let's actually try this out. Go under our game. What can we sell? We could sell the log or we could sell the brick. Let's go ahead and sell the brick for 300. So we're going to get um, 564. The brick is back on zero and we got 564 gold. Let's actually try spending that money now. Um, is there something that costs? Well, let's just go buy a range double. And it does make sense. Everything seems to be working fine. And uh, yeah. So our selling function is done. Now we can actually sell stuff, get some gold back. That's a good step forward, but there's still no way to actually get these loots and that's something we definitely need so let's let's head over to the loot manager and start coding a little bit of um, well some kind of way to actually get the drop from the minions 
Okay, so we only got these two functions inside of our loot manager. Now, there is something I've talked a little bit earlier, and um, it's the fact that I don't want all of these currency to be available at first. I only want three of them to be available, and then every 50 wave, we actually unlock a new one. But uh, right now, if we take a look at this, there is no way to actually keep track of that. So what we need to do is actually declare a public, and I'll use a bit array for this, that I'll call unlock loot and this is going to be my bit array now we're going to do the same exact thing we've did um, for the other bit array so we're going to include the system and in the await call I'm going to say unlock loot is equal to a new bit array and this takes in the length of that very bit array now um, we're using system so we can actually call something from the enum namespace so enum get names we're getting the names of type of loot dot length and this way we can actually get the number of loot there is inside of our loot array so this thing here in this case 13 all right now we need a few function down here to actually um, help us with that so the first one we are going to make is get the amount of unlocked loot have so get the amount of a uh, set bit we have so every bit that is true in the array we're going to count them and then return them public int get unlocked loot amount and like I said all we're going to be saying is uh, just get some kind of iterator and we're going to say for each bool b in unlocked loots if b is true then we do amount plus plus and then we return amount so this way we count how many unlocked loots we have then uh, we also need another one to actually unlock one of these and we also you know the order in which we unlock them is uh, the order they're actually written in the array so all we're going to be saying in our function which is a public void by the way not a public in uh, unlock loot all we're going to be saying is fairly simple we start by declaring int that we call int index we get the unlock loot amount which is the function we just made and we're going to say unlocked loots.set index true. So we're simply turning a boolean from false to true. And that should be pretty much it for the unlock loot. That's all we need to do here. But we might actually want to add a call a little bit later on here that says uh, go ahead and turn on the game object so I can actually see your loot container. Of course, right now we see all of them by default, but we are going to fix this by going over to the game UI. So, a few things are going to change in here, especially the order of the stud, because it's not in a good order, it's not going to be um, working in our favor. The first thing we will need to change inside of here is we're going to start by declaring the uh, loot. A loot container is so a public game object loot container. Let's get ahead and not mess around with this too much. We are going to go under the manager, find the game UI. And here's our new object, the loot container. Now this is going to be equal to the um, currency panel, currency list. So the list of every single currency we have, which is the list of loot now. So drag and drop this. Now we know that every single, well not every single, but we know that this is the container and inside of it there is every single loot. Okay, we can then move on. Um, the first thing we need to change is the navigate to. The navigate to actually turns off our panel, so we can't do a get component on the object beneath it. That's what we need to do. So this navigate to is going to go at the very end of our start function. Then what else do we need to do? This is fine. Oh, we now need a section for our loot container, of course. What I was planning to do is, uh, you see how we have this loot container? We're also going to have a private loot container array and that is for the component not for the game objects and I'm going to name this loot containers now I know it gets a little bit confusing but these are the components in a array and this is the container as a game object um, what I want to do is say loot containers is equal to a new loot container array and then we're going to be giving it a length so the length is going to be loot container the game object dot transform child count 
This way it is going to make a array that is as big as the amount of uh, transform, sub transform it has. Now we can iterate through it, so int i is equal to 0 as long as i is smaller than loot container that transform that child count, we do i++. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting. We first start by getting the transform, so transform t is equal to loot container dot transform dot get child, we get the child at index i. Now this way we have a uh, we have the loot container game object under the transform and we can say loot container with an s so that's the index of loot containers at index i is equal to t dot get component and we get the loot container type component. Then after that we can use that very transform to do a t dot game object dot set active false. This way we turn it off. Let's have a look at this in the game. We are going to save this. Did I save it? I feel like I didn't save it. No, I didn't save it. So you just do that again. So we go under the currency. Currency list goes in here. Save. And then we try this. Okay, if we go under currency now, there is nothing. And that's exactly what we told our code to do. But now what we'd like to do is actually unlock three of those. So at least unlock um, some loots so we can actually do see something, right? So just beneath that, we're going to be calling the loot container. We're going to be saying a loot container, or sorry, the loot manager. So loot manager dot instance unlock loot, the function. And we are going to be calling this three times. Now the only problem we have with this is it's actually going to turn on the uh, boolean, the bit boolean, but the objects are not being shown. So what I think we'll need to do is actually go inside of that loop manager and code something in here to actually get, um, well, to actually get the object showing. So we might actually need to have a reference, a game object reference to the loot container here as well. Let me just do that really quickly. If we go under the game scene, we find our manager. So where is it at? The loot manager over here and we drag and drop our loot container which is again our currency list we can simply say now loot container dot transform dot get child we're getting the get the index uh, index dot gain object dot set active through now this way if we boot our game using the preloader we should actually be able to see our three first currencies right there and here they are we can also sell so as you can tell we get the money back and uh, yeah now a bit later on all we had to be doing to in order to unlock a currency is like every 50 wave you just go ahead and you call loot manager dot instance dot unlock loot and it's actually going to pop a new loot down here until of course uh, we actually run out of those so whenever we hit wave 500 we don't care about this anymore and that is going to be pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. If you learned something or if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like. Really appreciate that as always. And uh, if you have any question or comment, you can use the Facebook page or the comment section below. Guys, uh, thanks a lot for watching again. Please subscribe for more and I will see you in the next episodes.